So how do you deal with idea theft and um, what normally happens with that? So this is really, really common in the academic arena in terms of other people stealing other people's ideas. Um, you know, you would think that it's not necessarily common, but it's a competitive environment, right? And what does competition do? It brings, do, it brings out the worst in everybody, right? Um, people are vying for limited amount of resources and they, um, you know, they don't do very good things when they do that, when they're pushed in the corner, right? So, um, tends to happen a fair bit in terms of intellectual property um, issues, right? That might happen in a university environment. And frankly, it happens in the business environment too. It's just that, um, you know, it's, it's not necessarily as tied to what's going on as much um, for the individual people. Um, and it's not necessarily sort of part and parcel of the personal identity of the people that are involved, right? So um, what can you do, right? With the, the sort of problems that you might experience with intellectual property theft. Um, I'm gonna tell you right up front, there is not much you can do. Um, there are routes in terms of you know, legal routes or within your organization to deal with these things. Um, you know, for example, you can go talk to the chancellor or omnibus person, somebody that handles the intellectual property disputes and have a conversation with them. And if it's somebody that's in your university that that's happening to you, then you go have a conversation with them and get the ball rolling. I'm gonna tell you this, it's super common. Um, and and, 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 you know, this is not out of the ordinary in any sort of way. Um, but in that case, you know, in the formal route, and then you know, the other thing that you could do with the formal route is, especially if it's published or it's out in the public domain on somebody else and you have some pretty good proof of, um, you could go talk to journal uh, editors and things like that, people that are sort of gatekeepers and tell them what's going on. But here's the thing, um, you better make sure that you have some really strong proof with that. Like you have the, the article that is written and you have proof that it's yours. Like maybe you pu uh, published it someplace else or, you know, those kind of things. It's really important to have that down and to have that evidence because it's really, uh, he said, she said sort of, situation where um and that's what's going to happen right the other person unless that they're blatantly plagiarizing and and taking from you um it's a dispute that it's hard to win with any of it so that's that's the one extreme version and that stuff happens right like everybody's been there um you know not everybody's been there but but it definitely happens and you've heard of stories and all those kind of things where this definitely happens. Um, I heard of one story, this goes back to my, my PhD program. Somebody had told me that they had left their manuscripts in the recycling bin and somebody picked it up and published it, which was like, that was, that was something. Um, so you just have to look out for those things. Now, for the most part, intellectual property is ideas right in the academic game and those ideas are not going to be written down um they're going to be based on conversations they're going to be based on things that you talk about in class like all kind of really amorphous things and there's actually you know a problem kenneth arrow pointed this out who is a really famous economist um where if ideas are valuable if you control them but as soon as you tell other people, people really want those ideas, they are not valuable after that. Um, it's called the paradox of disclosure. And, and the idea is, is that um, you holding on to the idea makes them really, really valuable to other people. Um, and so they want to sort of take those ideas, right? Um, but then you can't necessarily 
place any value on it once it's in the public domain. Um, and so this is a real tricky thing that ends up happening with it, um, with ideas that you might have. Um, and so I think the way, there's two ways that you could protect yourself from um, idea disclosure that's gonna run into issues. So the first thing is, is you know it's gonna happen, right? Like that's just part of, part of it. And if it happens, you have to change your mindset and just say, hey, I'm a pretty smart individual and that person is, or you know, the person that sort of did that kind of activity, they, may, they might actually like it and they like what you're, what you're saying. So you have to, you know, change how you sort of view the world and and um, sort of see that that it's in some way it's just somebody saying that they really like what you're doing. Um, but you know that still doesn't pay the bills, right? That's how we get paid is through intellectual contributions, um, and you know you're not going to get that particular credit for any of those um, for for any of that kind of stuff. So. The two ways that you can protect yourself, quote unquote, protect yourself from it happening. The first thing is have some sort of proprietary um, thing that's yours as part of the process. This is what um, this is what you know companies do, right? So they have a proprietary process. You know that's why Coke, for example, hides their recipe um, for Coke because they have some sort of proprietary process or recipe that other people can't take. And if there's a telltale sign whenever somebody takes that thing. So it could be data that you own, or you went and talked to different people and you have a certain set of, um, you know, you just have something that's very unique and that's very proprietary to, to you and to your lab. The other thing is that you just be cagey, you know, um, you sort of, cage things as much as you possibly can and um you know i i tend to be more of i've, I've learned to be less serious about things kind of um you know dodge the bullet a little bit more dodge like when somebody is, is being direct to something i just be a lot more cagey and you'll result in in a lot less um, issues like that it's still gonna happen but you're just very cagey it's it's like you know I went to this conference when and it's and it's different in every field some some are a lot more competitive than others right and I went to this one conference one once on um, medical devices and they were so adamant about this problem that they basically said, you don't want to publish anything unless you have it under a patent in that particular arena, um, which is quite interesting that that was such a problem because it is rampant, um, you know, where people uh, take other people's ideas. You're in, so the reason is uh, culturally, um, intellectual property means different things to different people and they people come from all over the world around the world and we have different cultural understandings of intellectual property i've not seen a paper on this by the way but um it's, somebody's gonna go take that idea now <laughs> um but you know people have uh, cultural understandings of intellectual property and what it means and so some people don't take it as strictly as you know, somebody who was born and raised in Canada and we're very like strict on this kind of stuff. Um, and it came from a very Catholic family. So we had very strong morals beat into our heads. Um, but, you know, you have to realize that people have different backgrounds and it's gonna happen. And if there's different labs in different countries, right? Um, you can't prevent that from from not happening because there's no international laws. You can't pursue any of that kind of stuff. The, the gatekeepers at the journals are the only things that sort of prevent that from happening. Um, but even then, you know, they can't, if there are ideas that are close in, in how they're done, so they can control blatant stuff, right? 
but they can't control when there's ideas that free flow between, um, you know, individuals or conver um, conversations or, you know, conference presentations, you know, anything like that. Um, you can't control that stuff because it bleeds into everybody else, right? So um, the only thing you could do, be cagey, have proprietary software or pr proprietary data, something along those lines. Um, and then when it happens to you, just try to live your life and uh, you know, do your thing. Just keep going. And um, just know it's a, somebody thinks it very fondly of what you're doing and what you actually say. So that's it. All right, take care and have a wonderful day.